Here we're going to be able to see the connection between linear systems and matrices. So in the corner up here, there is a group of equations. So we, of course, can call this a system. Now, because each of these two equations here are also linear equations, then we can call it a linear system when every condition is linear in nature. So it turns out that every linear system we can represent with a matrix equation so let me show you what that's going to look like. Now, um, it's really important that when you see the connection between the linear system and the matrix equation, that the linear system, how it's written, is really important because it's very organized in that I have everything really in standard form, and the x's and y's are all kind of in the same positions, that sort of a thing. So um, when I first of all put in these entries into this first matrix right here. You'll notice that those numbers are just the coefficients of the x's and the y's, but it's all organized, of course, because your x coefficients are in that column and y coefficients are in that column, and then also everything from the first equation ended up in that row, etc. So I'm going to take this first matrix, which uh, we often will call the coefficient matrix because, of course, consists of the coefficients of the variables. When we multiply this coefficient matrix, we're going to multiply it with a column matrix always, and it's just going to be the variables that you have in the order that you have them. So x and y, and then of course um, we call that the variable matrix, a fitting name. So that's going to equal, in other words, when you multiply those two matrices, it's going to equal another matrix, and that matrix will also be another column matrix that has the constants that you have on the other side, and that's exactly what we call generally that particular matrix in a matrix equation like this, so this would be the constant matrix. So what you're seeing here is a linear system, and then what you're seeing here is a matrix equation, they're the same thing as each other. Um, and so to kind of help you to see why and how they are exactly the same as each other, what I want to do is I want to take this matrix equation right here, and on the left-hand side of it, because we have multiplication of two matrices, of course, we can kind of simplify that. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply these two matrices. Note that we can because we do have a 2 by 2 and a 2 by 1. So because the number of rows in the second matrix is equal to the number of columns in the first matrix, then we can multiply, and you're going to get a 2 by 1 matrix as your answer. So to get that 2 by 1 matrix as your answer, then to get that entry right there, you're going to have to multiply pairwise that row with that column, which is then going to give you negative 2x plus 3y as the first entry there. And then you can also multiply pairwise the 5 and the 1 with the x and the y. And that's going to give you 5x plus 1y there. So that just kind of simplified the left-hand side. You'll notice that this is still, of course, going to be equal to negative 11 and 19. And then, then obviously from there, that should tell you that, oh, 5x plus y should have the same value as 19, since they're both the bottom entries. And then negative 2x plus 3y should have the value of negative 11. But what you're seeing there is exactly what we're seeing up here, because negative 2x plus 3y has the same values equal to negative 11. And similarly, the same thing for 5x plus y and 19. So that shows you how they're the same as each other. So the power of this is that then when you have a matrix equation like this, if we wanted to solve for this x and this y value, you can, because we know how to get rid of that matrix negative 2, 3, 5, 1, or in other words, undo the multiplication of that, because all we really need to do is just multiply by the inverse of that to isolate the x and the y. So that's what I want to do right now, is kind of the second part of this, is to actually solve this equation. So once we have this in matrix equation form, so I'm really just copying what we had previously, I'm just going to take this now, and I'm going to just solve for what x, y is. So to be able to solve this equation here, all, I, all I'm going to need to do is multiply by the inverse of the negative 2, 3, 5, 1 matrix, because that's just going to equal i, and then i times the x, y matrix will just equal x, y. And so I need to do the same thing to the other side. So since I multiplied in front on the left side, I need to multiply in front by that same inverse matrix of the negative 2, 3, 5, 1. So whatever we get from taking the inverse of that matrix times that matrix should equal x times y. So the fastest way, of course, would be to do this using technology. 
So I'm just going to enter in these matrices that we have. And then once we've done that, then I can just go ahead and I want to take the A matrix, the negative 2, 3, 5, 1. I'm going to take the inverse of that and gives me that. And then I want to multiply it by B. And then that's going to give me um, 4, negative 1 is the answer to that multiplication, which equals x, y. So of course from that, that should tell us that x is 4 then and y is negative 1. Um, which solves the matrix equation, but also equivalently at the same time tells you that the solution to that linear system is actually the point or the ordered pair for negative 1. So just a, kind of another example that's uh, similar in nature to this. Um, it says to use an inverse matrix to solve the linear system. So um, we could, if we wanted to, like solve this linear system using methods of like substitution or elimination, graphing, all that sort of stuff. Um, which, you know, this looks like, you know, a nice substitution problem because you could take that and plug it in for y, of course. Um, but if we're to do this using an inverse matrix and use this um, with matrix equations, then you're going to want to have your equations in standard form. So like with the second equation, I just need to maybe get the y term over to the same side as the x term. So that would just be 3x minus 2y equals 3. Um, the other equation, um, we're going to need to get the x term over to the other side as well and get negative 5 force x plus y equals negative 1. Um, and you could leave it like that. That's fine. If you want to have just only integers, like you could multiply both sides, I guess, by like 4, because then you would get negative 5x plus 4y equals negative 4. So either way is fine. So I'll just kind of write it so we have just integers to work with. Um, and so then, now that it's in standard form, now you can write this in matrix equation form. So then you can go from here and do negative 5 and 4 and 3 and negative 2 is the coefficients of those variables. Uh, the variables are the same in this case where you have x and y, and then this is going to be equal to negative 4 and 3. Um, so of course you don't want to multiply by the inverse on both sides, which since I've kind of just done this in the calculator just with the previous problem, really I can just kind of keep the matrices the same sizes, but just change their um, elements correspondingly, I guess. And change that to be negative 4 and 3. And then you can see that A inverse times B is kind of giving me an answer there of negative 4 and 3 is going to have to equal um, your x and y values to be able to solve that. Um, so I just want to show you with these examples here. So um, if I write this as a matrix equation here, I'll get the following. And then uh, if I were to solve this, again, I can kind of just replace the same numbers that we had. Okay, so with that now, now that I put in the numbers, it turns out that A inverse times B is kind of giving me uh, an error because you got that little triangle with the exclamation point on it. So if I click on that triangle with the exclamation point there, it says that singular matrices do not have an inverse. Singular matrices do not have an inverse. So what does that mean about X and Y then? Well, the problem with this is that if I were to try to multiply by the inverse of the 4, negative 6, negative 10, 15 matrix, it turns out that that inverse there actually doesn't exist. And recall that an inverse doesn't exist only when the determinant of the matrix is 0. And so you can check that because if we do find the determinant of that matrix, it would be 4 times 15, which is 60. Negative 6 times negative 10 is 60, and 60 minus 60 equals 0. So lo and behold, it doesn't have an inverse. So what's actually going on here then? Like what would we have as an answer? And the, the answer to this is, well, it's kind of a special case. And the reason why this is a special case is because if you solve this first equation for y, um, you would end up getting 
two thirds x um, and then minus three halves for y and then if you solve the other equation for y you're going to get two thirds x plus eight fifteenths. And so if you think about the graphs of those equations, you'll notice they both have slopes of two-thirds, but the y-intercepts are different numbers. So what that's going to tell you is that these lines are parallel to each other. So they're never going to cross each other, which means that there's no pair of x and y that can satisfy that equation at the same time as that equation. So what we can conclude from this is that there is actually um, going to be no solution. And the only way really you could tell from that um, is to actually like graph the lines or get them in a way where you would know there would be no solution. So just looking at that little triangle doesn't really tell you that there's going to be no solution because it turns out that if we did this problem here as well, um, without me actually putting this into the calculator, you're going to get the same triangle error um, because the matrix of 2, negative 1, 6, negative 3 also doesn't, um, has, a, has a determinant of 0 so it doesn't have an inverse matrix. Um, but it turns out that if you solve these equations for y, you're going to have y equals 2x plus 6 for the first equation. And then if you solve the second equation for y, you get y equals 2x plus 6. And then when you compare those equations, it turns out that they're the same equations as each other. So the solutions that satisfy the system are going to be all of the same xy points that all lie on that same line. So it just turns out that the solutions here are all of the ordered pairs, um, x, y ordered pairs that satisfy y equals 2x plus 6, that's going to be the set of solutions, and that's going to give you an infinite number of solutions there, of course. Um, and then one more in terms of setup, so you can definitely use matrix equations when there's lots of variables, and that's actually where matrix equations are more helpful because technology can do stuff so much faster. Um, so when you've got like three variables and three equations like this, then you'll want to have a three by three um, correspondingly. Notice that the equations are in standard form, um, and so if I write the coefficients for the first row, we get the following. Now you're going to notice that in the second equation, we don't have any y term, so you can really kind of think about that as being like 1 times x plus 0 times y plus 2 times z. So you definitely need to put zeros wherever you have missing terms. And then the same thing kind of occurs in the second or the third row there that you're missing an x term. So you have to put a zero there and then a two and then a negative one. So then you'll multiply it with, uh, we've got x, y, and z are the variables in order. And then that's going to be equal to the um, constants of two, eight, and one. So you can also solve this equation just by multiplying by the inverse of that three by three matrix. Um, to the front of both sides of this. It's just a matter of putting it into Desmos and changing the sizes and putting the correct numbers, and you'll come up with the um, correct solution for that.